On this Mother's Day, uh, we turn to a special story that we've heard in the children's sermons here and in the Celebrate service. This is a story that centers in the first woman in the New Testament to be named a disciple of the Lord. Uh, Her name in Greek is Dorcas. Uh, Her Aramaic name is probably a little prettier, Tabitha. Uh, Listen for God's word to us this day. From Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 36. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in the room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them When he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. And then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up, then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me again? Now, Lord, grant that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The story is told of a a veteran pastor who was making hospital calls, and he went to visit a member of his congregation who was nearing the end of his life. Entering the room, the pastor saw the IVs and the oxygen tubes supporting his breath and monitors that were showing his weakening heart rate, his low blood oxygen rate. The man was not doing well. Good morning, Bob, the pastor began. After a a brief exchange that was shortened by Bob's clear fatigue, he could barely speak, the pastor asked him, how can I pray for you, Bob? And Bob gathered himself and he said, pray for me to be healed. Well, the pastor thought, okay. (laughs) And he began his prayer. Oh, Lord, our God, we thank you for the gift of life. And we offer our prayer that if it be your will, our brother Bob might be healed. But if it not be your will... Help us embrace whatever may come forth in faith and hope in your steadfast love and ever-guiding providence. Amen. Well, when the pastor looked up, he, he saw Bob's eyes brightening. The color began returning to his face, and he, he blinked his eyes, and he, he kind of rubbed the sleep out of his eyes, and he, he sat up on the side of his bed and stretched out his arms and got the crick out of his neck and started pulling out the IVs and the breathing tubes and and he jumped out of bed and proclaimed, I'm healed. And he ran down the hallway, jumping in the air, kicking his heels, I'm healed, I'm healed. Meanwhile, the pastor slipped out of the room down the stairwell and as he walked out of the hospital towards his car in the parking lot, he looked to heaven and he said, don't you ever do that to me again. We like worlds we can control. (laughs) Do you think Peter had any of those feelings as he made his way to Joppa? He was called there by grieving disciples mourning the death of their hero, Tabitha. Probably not. Peter has been on a miraculous healing tour of sorts. He, He healed the lame man at the beautiful gate 
A few weeks ago, we heard about that. He's just healed a paralyzed man named Aeneas in Lida. Peter prob probably did not have that, that deep sense of realism that many pastors get after living into years of watching people we love and care about battle for life and, and too often succumb to death. Peter probably did not offer any, if it be your will, but if it not be your will prayers as he, as he knelt down there next to Tabitha. Though Bill Sutherland did point out in Bible study this week that Peter does ask all the widows to leave the room before he prays. Maybe he was covering his bases. I, I don't know. Probably not. Wouldn't you love to know the prayer Peter prayed? If only we could know that formula, get down on our knees and pray with the fervent faith that those we've lost to death might be resuscitated to life? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, to be honest, I'm not sure I could handle that kind of power. I don't know that I could trust myself with it. How would I know when to employ this power to bring people back to life? Certainly, in the wake of a tragic loss, the, the death of a child, a, a death that comes too soon, it would make sense. But what about more natural deaths? As many of you know, my mom died this past New Year's. She lived a rich and full life, and she went out on her own terms at 87 years old. The moment I was told that she died, I probably would have done anything to bring her back. And if I had the power to do that and brought her back, she would likely have said to me, what the heck? <laughs> I fought the good fight. I finished my work. I was on to glory. I raised you to stand on your own two feet. Get on with life. I'm going on to glory. That's what she would have said to me. I wonder how Tabitha felt about Bring, being brought back to life. Was she excited to return to this world? Or do you think it frustrated her? Can you imagine her saying, you know, Peter, I've worked my fingers to the bone my whole life for these widows, and I was ready to go to glory. Luke doesn't tell us how she responded. He tells us that many believed in the Lord because of her resuscitation. Life indeed goes on, and that's what Luke wants us to know. The power that worked through Christ to raise Lazarus from the dead, to, to raise Jairus' daughter from the dead, that same power is working through Peter and through the church. That's what Luke wants us to know. And yet, I can't help but wonder about Tabitha and her perspective. She's a passive character in the story. We, she doesn't say a word. We, we don't know how old she was. We don't know much about her at all. What we do know is impressive. She, as I mentioned, is the only woman in Scripture to be called a disciple of the Lord. We are given her name in two languages, Aramaic and Greek. One scholar suggests she was likely bilingual, speaking both languages, as she lived in Joppa, which was a very cosmopolitan port city. We know that she dedicated her life to work among widows, crafting clothes for them, tunics, robes, wraps, and dresses. In the ancient world, widows were at the very bottom of the social ladder, the poorest of the poor, and Tabitha was there for them, embodying the love of God by making them clothing. And then she died. It was a tragic loss for the community, so tragic, they send word to Peter to come without delay. There's there's nothing to suggest they imagined he could do anything about this, but they want 
this leader of the church to know about this incredibly faithful disciple of the Lord who has died, so they send word for him to come without delay. And he does. And upon arriving in that upper room, they show him all that she's done for them, all the cloaks, all the tunics, all the gowns and the shawls she's woven for them. And through them, they share with Peter the stories of Tabitha's life, her amazing ministry. As preaching professor Thomas Troger describes, and so the stories flow on, the stories of spinning and weaving and sewing, wrapped up in the spinnings and weavings and sewings of these women's lives. Now what happens next is a mystery. It's a miracle beyond explaining. Luke tells us, as we read, Peter puts all of them outside, and then he calls Tabitha to get up, to rise back to life. What amazing power. I can't begin to explain why this happened in that moment, but it doesn't happen in millions of other moments. How exactly did it happen? I don't know. It, it certainly could have happened exactly as it's described, even though it is not possible for me to connect that to our lived experiences of life and death. Thomas Troger suggests a different way that Tabitha's life may have been raised. It might not have just been through Peter that God worked to raise Tabitha. He writes, I believe the women had already released the power of new life into the room because when they touched those garments, they touched more than a piece of cloth. They touched the spinnings and weavings and sewings of a life that was dedicated to Jesus Christ. Touching these clothes, they touched the fabric of their existence. They reclaimed their connection to this lovely, generous woman who was connected to Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. And when the women brought out those stories, brought out the spinnings and the weavings and the sewings of their life together, the risen Christ joined them, the Christ who had lived in Tabitha, the Christ by whose power Peter said, Tabitha, get up. While I've never experienced something like Tabitha's resuscitation in Acts, I have experienced touching the spinnings and the weavings and the sewings of life, feeling the fabric of a loved one's existence, feeling their life flowing on in and through our lives, that love that power for life that is stronger even than death, that is the heart of God's gospel power embodied in Christ Jesus and empowered in and through all of us. I've been feeling that power since my mom's death. She wasn't a seamstress like Tabitha, but she was an artist. And throughout her life as an art teacher with special populations and as an art therapist, she helped people living with cognitive and physical impairments create art and find their own purpose and power through their creations. And she also created a lot of her own art. Every square inch of available wall space in her tiny cottage in the senior living community where she spent her last years was covered with paintings. And much of that art now adorns the walls of our house. This is a painting of blue bonnets in a Texas field she did. It takes me back to a road outside Corsicana, Texas where we came across this amazing beauty. And she pulled over the car and we stopped and we got out and we just 
took it in together. This painting is a family tree of sorts with images from all the churches where our ancestors were baptized and married and buried in southern Germany. If you, if you zoom in, you can see some of them marrying the images of the churches. That's my family tree. This is a family quilt with pictures of her ancestors and her descendants that are painted into the fabric of the canvas. If we zoom in, you can see those. When I touch the brush strokes of her art, I feel the energy of her life. I feel her presence. And I claim the truth of the gospel that love and life are stronger even than death. That because Christ lives, she lives in glory beyond my comprehension. With the women showing Peter the spinnings and the weavings and the sewings of Tabitha's life, of their life together, I feel the power of the risen Christ that brings her life into the present, even on the other side of death. I feel the power of this miraculous story from Acts. Who are you remembering today? Who are you celebrating? What tunics are you weaving in your own life? What are the spinnings and the weavings and the sewings shaping the fabric of your existence? What will future generations remember when they pull out what you've created? The paintings of your life. You are creating them right now. You will be making them this afternoon wherever you go from this place. You will be creating them Monday morning in the spinnings and weavings and sewings in the brush strokes that are every minute of every hour of every day you live. Whatever form they take, beloved, know that the risen Christ is woven into the fabric of your existence, your relationships, your life together. His love is stitched into your soul and it holds everything together. Christ is with you, around you, through you, in you, calling you each and every day to get up, to rise and join God's life-giving work in this world. In Christ, through Christ, with Christ, by his power, life goes on and on and on. Thanks be to God. Amen.